Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AEW Dynamite review. Dynamite tonight was from the Scott and Stein Center in Columbus, Ohio. Dynamite tonight, I thought it was a very good show, very entertaining, very good wrestling on the show tonight. To which AEW every single week, uh, the wrestling is very good. But tonight on Dynamite, we saw Jay Lethal versus Orange Cassidy. We saw the return of the Undisputed Elite, you know, Adam Cole, Kyle Riley, Bobby Fish, and then the Bucks uh, were also there. So we saw the return of them tonight, which was awesome. And then we saw Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter. They end up teaming up to take on Thunderstorm, you know, Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm. Powerhouse Hobbs was in action after he turned heel last week on Ricky Starks. After Ricky Starks lost the FTW Championship to Hook. We also saw Christian Cage in action where he ended up taking on Matt Hardy. We also saw a dumpster match, which uh, was the acclaimed Max Caster and Anthony Bowens versus the Gun Club, Austin and Colton. And main event. It was Chris Jericho versus Will Yuta. Overall, Dynamite Tonight, very entertaining, good show it was. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. Dynamite opened up tonight with Orange Cassidy versus Jay Lethal. And this was a fun match. You know, very good match this was. Orange Cassidy... End up coming out first. And then uh, Jay Lethal uh, made his way out. He was accompanied by Sanjay Dutt and Satnam Singh, of course. But Jay Lethal sended both Sanjay Dutt and Satnam Singh to the back. You know, he didn't want uh, them both out there. You know, he didn't need help uh, from the both of them. So he just wanted to fight Orange Cassidy, you know, just by himself. But the crowd cheered big for Orange Cassidy. They were really behind him. So the match started off. Orange Cassidy ended up going to put his hands in his pockets. But Jay Lethal charged at Cassidy and rolled Cassidy up. Cassidy then kicked out. And he, had, he then delivered a shoulder block to Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal fired back. With a shoulder block of his own to Orange Cassidy, and he delivered an arm drag. Cassidy ended up tricking Jay Lethal into thinking that he was going to hit an arm drag to him. Cassidy then ended up putting his hands in his pockets, and he delivered a drop kick to Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal then rolled to the outside, and Orange Cassidy delivered a, a toupee suicida onto Jay Lethal, which was great. Orange Cassidy then delivered uh, his, of course, kicks, his signature kicks uh, up the ramp on Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal crawled to the top of the ramp and Sanem Sin ended up coming out. And he ended up blocking Orange Cassidy uh, from going to uh, Jay Lethal. So the best friends end up coming out. You know, Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor. Trent Beretta uh, was... Uh, on top of Chuck Taylor's shoulders. So they only did that to match Satnam Sin's height. Of course, because Satnam is a tall guy. You know, he's the uh, great value, great Kali. That's why I call him. You know, he's the great Kali of AEW. So Orange Cassidy then ended up tossing Jay Lethal back in the ring. And Cassie delivered a crossbody off the top. Jay Lethal then fired back with a dragon screw to Orange Cassidy, which he then threw Cassie out of the ring. Lethal ended up placing Cassie's ankle on the ring steps, and Lethal ended up stomping down on uh, Cassie's ankle. Jay Lethal then ended up sending Orange Cassidy's ankles up between the steps and the ring. And he delivered a drop kick to crush uh, Orange Cassidy's ankle, you know, between uh, the steps and the ring. 
So Jay Lethal ended up getting Orange Cassidy back into the ring. He just was continuing uh, to work on Orange Cassidy's ankle. Jay Lethal then delivered some more stomps to uh, Cassidy's ankle. And he then stepped on uh, Cassidy's ankle while it was on the bottom rope. Cassidy then ended up sending Jay Lethal into the corner. And Jay Lethal ended up managing to, to deliver a avalanche dragon screw to uh, Orange Cassidy. So Lethal ended up locking in the figure four. And Orange Cassidy ended up rolling to the bottom rope to break it up. Lethal ended up looking to go for the vertical suplex on Orange Cassidy. But Cassidy ended up reversing that into a cutter, uh, which was cool. Jay Lethal ended up hitting the Lethal combination and he ended up going for a pin on Orange Cassidy. Cassidy ended up kicking out. So Lethal ended up climbing up to the top rope. Orange Cassidy ended up rolling to the opposite corner and he ended up posing, just showing off. Orange Cassidy then ended up hitting a back elbow to Jay Lethal. He climbed up to the top turnbuckle and then he delivered a DDT. Orange Cassidy delivered a DDT off the top rope to Jay Lethal, which was great. So Orange Cassidy ended up going for the cover and Jay Lethal ended up kicking out. Orange Cassidy was going to go for the orange punch, but of course his injured ankle ended up uh, giving out. So Jay Lethal was going to go for the power bomb. Cassidy countered that into a back body drop. So Cassidy ended up going for the cover and Jay Lethal ended up kicking out. Orange Cassidy was going to go for the orange punch again, but Jay Lethal ended up moving out of the way. Jay Lethal delivered a kick to Orange Cassidy's uh, knee, and Lethal followed that up and hit the lethal injection on Orange Cassidy. And there you go. Jay Lethal ended up winning the match. Post-match, we had Satnam Sin and Sanjay Dutt. They end up coming down. Sanjay Dutt end up uh, trolling Jay Lethal because he ended up asking Jay Lethal for his thought in Warlow because uh, Jay Lethal ended up staring down uh, Warlow on Rampage last week. So Jay Lethal got on the mic. He ended up calling Warlow out to the ring. And he ended up saying that he's going to lock in the figure four on Orange Cassidy and break his leg. So we had the best friends, Chuck Taylor and Trent Barretta. They end up running down and then Warlow end up coming out. Warlow was fuming. So as Warlow end up coming into the ring, Jay Lethal, uh, Sanjay Dutt, and Satnam Sin end up retreating out of the ring. Warlow end up calling for a fight for Jay Lethal to come back to the ring. But Sanjay Dutt got on the mic. He ended up saying no. Because Jay Lethal had a 15-minute match. So Sanjay Dutt end up challenging Warlow to put his TNT Championship on the line at Battle of the Belts. So we're going to get that at Battle of the Belts. You know, it's going to be Warlow versus uh, Jay Lethal. So Warlow end up welcoming Columbus to Warlow's world. So Warlow end up accepting the challenge. He ends up saying that he doesn't care when or where. So we're going to be seeing that match at Battle of the Belts 3 this Saturday. Warlow versus Jay Lethal, TNT Championship on the line. But overall, very fun match between Orange Cassidy and Jay Lethal. A good match. And then we saw a video package of Hook win the FTW Championship from Ricky Starks, which we saw last week on Dynamite. You know, Hook win his first ever championship in AEW uh, there last week. And then we saw Adam Cole, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish end up coming down to the ring. So we had the return of the Undisputed Elite. So they end up getting into the ring. Adam Cole got on the mic and he ended up asking, 
who's ready for story time? Cole went on to say that it's great to be back in the ring. He kept saying that he's still not medically clear to compete and that he's had lots of time to reflect on the undisputed elite. So Adam Cole, I'm saying that being a leader is about figuring about how to improve and be loyal. He kept saying that five of the best are standing in the ring. And he kept calling uh, his other men his brothers. You know, the Young Bucks, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Adam Cole ended up saying that loyalty is power and success. He then wants to say that this brings him to the Trios Championship Tournament. Of course, Trios titles are now made and they look awesome so the tournament's going to be happening should be a great uh tournament so adam cole end up addressing the young bucks saying that they can't do the tournament if they choose not to do the tournament with bobby fish and kyle o'reilly because they're not medically cleared so we saw Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, they attacked both the Young Bucks. Kyle O'Reilly ended up choking out Nick Jackson and Adam Cole delivered a super kick to Matt Jackson. Hangman Page then ended up coming out and he had a pipe in hand and he ended up making a save and he ends up looking at the Bucks and Page ended up helping uh, Matt Jackson back up. And pretty much that was that. So the Undisputed Elite turned on the Bucks tonight. So this means, you know, what happens when Kenny Omega comes back? Who is he going to side with? Is he going to side with the Undisputed Elite or the Young Bucks? To me, if Kenny Omega returns, I have to say that he's probably going to side with probably the undisputed elite. That's how I sense it. That's my prediction. Maybe wrong on that. But this is leading to something great. You know, with the with the undisputed elite and the young bucks. So but overall really enjoyed uh this segment. Man, great to see Adam Cole, Kyle Riley, and Bobby Fish uh, return. But this was good. The heel turn was great of the Undisputed Elite to turn on the Bucks. And like I said, this sets up for a major storyline between the Undisputed Elite and the Young Bucks. And who is Kenny Omega going to side with when he returns? Like I said, my prediction, he sides with the Undisputed Elite. Now, I may be wrong on that, though. But Kenny Omega... Has to make a choosing. Does he go with the Undisputed Elite? Or does he side with the Young Bucks? Does he have to wait and see? But overall, this was a very good segment. And I like how they uh, set this up. You know, with the heel turn. And, you know, going into this uh, major storyline that's going to be underway. And then we saw John Moxley. John Moxley was backstage. He ended up addressing both Chris Jericho and Will Yuta. Moxley ended up saying that he doesn't care which one of them wins, friend or enemy. He ended up saying that because when the bell rings, he has no respect for anyone. Moxley ended up saying that he's trying to hurt his opponent, no matter who they are. And Moxley ended up saying that he's the best because he takes no days off. Moxley then went on to say that they both should be ready when they step in the ring with him next week. So that was what uh, Moxley had to say. Moxley is, of course, ready to go. And as Dynamite came back from the commercial, we saw Tony Schiavone backstage with Christian Cage. You know, Christian ended up saying that Jungle Boy was raised by terrible human beings. And so then we see this car 
comes into the arena out of nowhere. And the car almost ran over Christian. So Jungle Boy ended up getting out of the car. Jungle Boy was the one who was driving the car. And security ended up dragging Jungle Boy out of the parking lots arena. So pretty much, you know, that was basically that. You know, sent up for uh, Christian Cage versus Jungle Boy. And, you know, with Luchasaurus, you know, he's still dressed in uh, black. You can tell that still. Luchasaurus, I think, is still going to be, uh, you know, heel. And he's going to turn on Jungle Boy. And then we saw Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter versus Thunderstorm, you know, Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm. And this was a awesome match here. Love the pairing of Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm. I think they make a good team. So the match started off with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. And Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker end up staring each other down as the bell rang. Thunder Rosa end up sending Britt Baker down to the mat. Britt Baker end up firing some right hands to Thunder Rosa. Britt Baker end up looking to go for the lockjaw on Thunder Rosa, but Thunder Rosa countered the lockjaw into a pin, to which uh, Baker end up kicking out. Baker then tagged in Hager. Thunder Rosa then delivered a drop kick to Jamie Hayter. She ended up going for the pin, and Jamie Hayter end up kicking out. Tony Storm end up tagging in, and she delivered some kicks to Jamie Hayter's midsection. Thunder Rosa end up tagging back in, and she ends up sending Jamie Hayter into the top turnbuckle, face first. So Thunder Rosa then delivered a chop to Jamie Hayter, followed by a forearm and some back elbows. Thunder Rosa then delivered a kick to Jamie Hayter's back, and she ends up going for the pin. Jamie Hayter ends up kicking out. So Jamie Hayter ends up hitting a right hand on Thunder Rosa. Hayter then tagged in Britt Baker. Baker ended up sending Thunder Rosa into the middle of the turnbuckle. She ended up going for the pin, and Thunder Rosa ended up kicking out. We have Britt Baker then delivered a suplex to Thunder Rosa. She ended up going for a pin, and Thunder Rosa ended up kicking out. Britt Baker then delivered another suplex, went for another pin, to which Thunder Rosa kicked out of that one. Jim Hare then tagged in and started being down on Thunder Rosa. Baker then tagged back in, started kicking. Thunder Rosa down to the mat. So Jamie Hader ended up taking back in. Thunder Rosa then delivered a stunner to Jamie Hader. We had later on, uh, Britt Baker then delivered an elbow to Thunder Rosa, but Thunder Rosa fired back with a Death Valley driver. Toy Storm then tagged in, to which Rebel ended up causing a distraction, which allowed uh, Britt Baker to follow Toy Storm up to the top turnbuckle. And Britt Baker then delivered the air raid crash on uh, Tony Storm. Jamie Hayter then tagged in, delivered a Sly and Lariat to Tony Storm. She ended up going for the pin. Thunder Rosa came in and broke up the pin. So at the end of the match, we had uh, both uh, Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa delivered hip attacks to uh, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. And they were selling those uh, hip attacks, you know, really well. But in the end, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter ended up winning the match. But overall, this was a very good match here. I said, love the pairing of uh, Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm. You know, they make a good uh, team together. And then we saw a video of Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. And they end up revealing that they weren't on the show because they're getting married. So congrats to Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. Even though this video was cringe, in my opinion. And then Eddie Kingston ended up saving us from the awfulness and cringe. He ended up saying, no one cares that Guevara and Ty Conti are getting married. He kept saying that he signed a contract 
for All Out already, and he mailed it to Sammy Guevara. So pretty much Eddie Kicks ended up throwing down a challenge for Sammy Guevara at All Out. So that's going to be a good match there. So, And then we had Powerhouse Will Hobbs. He ended up coming out. The presentation of Hobbs, you know, was awesome, you know, with him coming out and that sort of like chandelier rise in. That was pretty cool. And then Taz uh, was on commentary. He ended up informing us that Team Taz is officially over and that he's done with uh, Team Taz. You know, he's done with uh, Hobbs and he's done with Ricky Starks. And, you know, he wishes... You know, Hobbs, Starks, and also Hook, all the best. So pretty much, we all know that Team Taz, you know, was officially over. So it's, it hasn't been Team Taz since Brian Cage uh, was kicked out. So, but we had Powerhouse Will Hobbs versus Ren Jones. This was a squash match. Hobbs just squashed this guy, and he had to pin him. So this is uh, them trying to uh, push, you know, re-push Powerhouse Will Hobbs. So the post-match, Ricky Starks ended up coming down, and he delivered a few forearms to Hobbs, but Hobbs ended up getting the upper hand, and he delivered a spine buster to Ricky Starks. So that was that, but looks like we're going to get uh, Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Will Hobbs at All Out. So I sense them uh, doing that. So it should be a uh, good match there. And then we had a vi video of Miro. And Miro was calling out Malachi Black and the rest of the House of Black. So Miro was calling them out because of them costing him the All-Atlantic Championship at Forbidden Door. So Miro still wants to get his hands on Malachi Black and you know the rest of the House of Black, you know, Brody King and Buddy Matthews. And then we saw a video from Darby Allen. Of course, Darby Allen reflecting on his feud that he's in with Brody King, and he ended up saying that he's going to shut the lid on his coffin next week. And he was taking credit for Brody King getting hired by AEW. So it's official. Next week on Dynamite's Quake at the Lake is going to be a coffin match. Darby Allen versus Brody King. So we're going to be seeing that next week. And then we had Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage. Very good match this was. Christian Cage ended up coming out first. And then Matt Hardy. Match ended up starting with Matt Hardy going after Christian. He started raining down on Christian. Christian came back, started throwing some forearms to Matt Hardy. Christian then rolled to the outside. And Matt Hardy ended up following Christian. So we had Matt Hardy end up sending Christian into the barricade. And Christian ended up sliding back uh, inside of the ring. Mel Hardy ended up sending Christian into the top and middle turnbuckle, which he followed up with a power bomb. So Mel Hardy ended up going for the cover, and Christian ended up kicking out. So both guys ended up spilling to the outside, and Christian ended up sending Mel Hardy headfirst into the uh, ring steps. Christian then delivered some kicks to Mel Hardy's neck. Christian then delivered a neck breaker, and then he ended up going for the cover, to which Matt Hardy ended up kicking out. Christian then ended up hitting Matt Hardy with a few forearms. He ended up climbing up to the top rope, and Matt Hardy ended up following Christian up, and Matt Hardy then delivered a superplex off the middle rope to Christian Cage. Matt Hardy ended up going for the cover, and Christian ended up kicking out. Matt Hardy then delivered a back body drop, and then he started just throwing some right hands in the corner to uh, Christian. 
Matt Hardy delivered an elbow off the middle rope. He was looking to go for the twist of fate, but Christian countered that, and he delivered an insiguri. Matt Hardy then delivered then delivered an elbow drop. He ended up going for the cover, and Christian ended up kicking out. Christian then ended up sending Matt Hardy bouncing off the top rope and delivered a diving headbutt off the top rope. So Christian ended up going for the cover. Matt Hardy ended up kicking out. Matt Hardy came back, delivered the side effect to Christian, to which he went for the cover, and Christian ended up kicking out. So both Matt Hardy and Christian were on the apron. Matt Hardy then delivered a side effect to Christian on the apron. He then grabbed the table, he set up the table, Matt Hardy hopped up on the apron, he ended up going for the elbow drop to Christian on the table, but Christian moved out of the way, and Matt Hardy ended up crashing through the table. Christian then ended up hitting the kill switch to Matt Hardy, he ended up going for the cover, and there you go, Christian ended up winning the match. Post-match, Christian ended up retrieving chairs from under the ring, Looked like he was going to go for the concerto to Matt Hardy. The Luchasaurus ended up coming out. Luchasaurus came out still with his uh, heel theme, you know, still wearing, you know, black. So then Jungle Boy ended up coming from the crowd. He had a black hoodie on and he surprised Christian from behind. And Chris, and uh, Jungle Boy ended up uh, grabbing a chair and Christian ended up retreating out of the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. So, but this feud uh, with Christian and Jungle Boy is just very good. You know, I'm, like, I'm loving where they, they are taking it. And, you know, Luchasaurus still coming, coming out with his heel theme and still wearing the black. You can already tell that Luchasaurus is going to be turning on Jungle Boy, if he's still, you know, dressed in black and still has his uh, heel theme, so I think Luchasaurus is going to still side with Christian Cage. And then we saw Danny Garcia backstage. Tony Schiavone was with him. Danny Garcia ended up saying that he beat Brian Danielson last week. He ended up telling him when his head is better, he wants another match with him to slay the dragon again. And that he'll be happy to slay him whenever Brian is ready. So that was pretty much what Danny Garcia had to say. And then we had Ethan Page. He ended up coming out and Ethan Page was bitching about why he isn't on TV every single week. Why doesn't he have an action figure? You know, just him bitching on the mic. Ethan Page ended up saying that he deserves better. So as as uh, Ethan Page was just bitching on the mic, we saw Stokely Hathaway making his way down. And then Stokely Hathaway got into the ring. And Page didn't see Stokely. As he was continuing the rant, he was asking, oh, why the fans aren't buying his AEW merch? Probably because nobody cares about Ethan Page. So we had Ethan Page end up finally getting Stokely Hathaway's attention. Stokely Hathaway end up giving him a card. And pretty much that was basically that. This was a waste. This was a waste of a segment. But with Stokely Hathaway, he gave Lee Moriarty his card. And then he gave Ethan Page uh, his card also. From what it looks like, I think we're going to be in the group where Stokely Hathaway is going to be uh, managing Lee Moriarty and Ethan Page and also another guy. Who that other guy might be? I don't know. So it looks like that's what they're setting it up. I think Stokely Hathaway is going to start a new group. He's still going to manage, you know, the baddies. He's still going to manage Jay Cargill and Kiara Hogan and, you know, Layla Gray. 
you know, Layla Gray is just a replacement in entry and batty until Red Velvet comes back from her injury. So I, he's still going to be managing them, and I think he's going to be starting this uh, new group, like I said, with Lee Moriarty and Ethan Page and another guy that Stokely might give his card to. So that's my prediction. And then we saw Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was backstage with Matt Menard, Angelo Parker, and Anna Jay. Matt Menard ended up saying that it makes his nipples hard, that Chris Jericho's going to win the AW World Championship a second time. So Tony ended up questioning that. Angelo Parker ended up berating Tony Schiavone for not believing in that Jericho's going to win the title a second time. And you have seen that the Jericho Appreciation Society just keeps getting better. And then Anna J, and here came the awfulness and cringe of Anna J on the mic, where she ended up saying that she's the sexiest and the toughest. And of course, with her cringe saying, Oh, I'm going to choke you out. I'm going to choke you out. She ended up saying that she's going to choke Tony Schiavone out. And that she'll choke out the camera guy. And then we see Anna J choking some crew guy out. And she was actually choking the crew guy. And that was that. But Anna J, they need to stop giving her the mic. She is absolutely terrible on the mic with her going, oh, I'm going to choke you out. I'm going to choke you out. Please. Don't hand her a mic. She's absolutely cringe and awful when she goes like that. Then we have the dumpster match. The Gun Club. Austin and Colton Gunn versus The Acclaimed. Anthony Bowens and Max Caster. And this was a fun match. And, you know, this was uh, done uh, last week in the... uh, the acclaimed music video showcasing uh, what uh, type of match that they were going to have with the Gun Club. And of course, it was a dumpster match because they ended up calling the Gun Club trash. So we had uh, the match start off with uh, the Gun Club coming to the ring. Bowens end up running out and he ended up hitting Billy Gunn with the trash can. Max Caster tossed. Uh, him into the side of the dumpster. Bowens then ended up hitting both Austin and Colton with the trash can. Max Caster then end up taking shots at the gun club. And Bowens ended up saying that the acclaimed have arrived. So Max Caster, he ended up saying that he's going to retire. He was rapping. He said he was going to retire the gun club just like Vince McMahon. <laughs> And that made me fucking laugh. And the crowd was just like, oh. It was just great when uh, Max Caster uh, said that. So burn on Vince McMahon there. So then we saw Austin and Colton. They end up tossing Max Caster into the side of the dumpster. Bowens then deliver a double suplex to the guns. And then Bones and Colton end up getting into the ring, and the match end up getting on the way. Colton Gunn end up opening the uh, tra- the dumpster before sending Bones face first, uh, half into the dumpster. So both the guns end up power bombing Bones into the dumpster, and they end up sending Caster into the ring post. So the guns end up sending Caster into the dumpster. They end up trying to close. Uh, the dumpster, but the acclaimed end up preventing that from happening. So Casta then end up hitting Austin Colton with a uh, bacon tray, which they pulled from the uh, dumpster. So it was just headshots that uh, Austin Colton took with that bacon tray. So Austin Gunn end up sending Bowens back into the ring, end up hitting him with a trash can. The guns end up double teaming on Bowens before they end up sending Max Caster into the barricade on the outside. So they end up getting Bowens into the dumpster and they tried to close uh, 
you know, the dumpster, but Bowens ended up preventing that from happening. Austin, Gunn, and Bowens were teetering on top of the dumpster. Austin ended up sending Bowens off on top of a bunch of trash cans. And they double teamed on Max Caster. Max Caster ended up fighting back. So we had the guns end up sending Max Caster to the side of the dumpster. Ended up grabbing a table out of the trash and set up the table. Colton, gun, then suplexed Max Caster off the stage onto metal scaffolding. So you just heard the crash of them on the metal scaffolding. So then we had uh, Caster then deliver the Colt 45 to Anthony Bowens on the ramp. Lawson Gunn headed backstage. He got up on top of the uh, tunnel, on top of the entrance tunnel. Bowens then ended up hitting Colton with the trash can. And what we saw was Max Caster. Max Caster snuck up on Austin Gunn on top of the tunnel. So we had Austin or Caster end up sending Austin into the dumpster. Bowens end up getting Colton on the table. And Max Caster from the top of the tunnel delivered the mic drop onto Colton through the table. Bowens then end up tossing uh, Colton into the dumpster. So both of the guns were in the dumpster. And D- Bowens end up uh, closing the dumpster, and there you go. The acclaimed ended up winning the match. Post match, we had the acclaimed, and this is what I love. They bought nostalgia here. So the acclaimed end up sending the dumpster off the stage with the guns inside of it. And when I say I love this because of nostalgia, this brought back, you know, memories of when the New Age Outlaws, you know, was Billy Gunn and Road Dog. They did the same thing to Mick Foley and Terry Funk when he was known as Chainsaw Charlie. The New Age Outlaws pushed the dumpster off the stage with Foley and Funk inside of uh, the dumpster on Monday Night Raw. Back in 1998, which that was a great moment. But I'm really glad that Bowens and Caster end up uh, bringing that nostalgia as to what you know the New Age Outlaws did to uh, McFoley and Terry Funk in that dumpster match on My Night Raw back in uh, 1998. So it was just great. But overall, this was a fun match. Main event. Chris Jericho versus Wheel Yuta. If Wheel Yuta won the match, he would get Jericho's shot for the entry of AEW World Championship at Quake at the Lake against John Moxley. And this was a good match. Jericho, of course, was accompanied by Matt Menard and Angelo Parker. So the match started off with Jericho. He ended up slapping Wheel Yuta. Yuta end up touching Jericho's nose because Jericho's nose was still bandaged after the uh, barbed wire everywhere match against Eddie Kingston two weeks ago. So we had Yuta end up bringing down right hands on Jericho. Yuta end up sending Jericho into the top turnbuckle and delivered a few chops to Jericho. Jericho rolled out of the ring. Yuta end up following him and continued assaulting Jericho. Yuta then ended up sending Jericho into the barricade, and he tossed him back to the ring. Yuta ended up popping up on the apron, and Matt Menard and Angel Parker ended up grabbing Yuta's ankle. So the referee, who was Aubrey Edwards, caught them. And she ended up ejecting both Matt Menard and Angel Parker from ringside. And of course, uh, Claudio Castanoli uh, was out there. So... Uh, Claudio end up uh, just walking uh, to uh, Matt Menard and Angela Parker, just you know, getting them away from a uh, ringside. So Wheeler Yuta then delivered a kick to Jericho's face, which he followed by a big boot. Yuta climbed to the top turnbuckle, 
Jericho knocked uh, Yuta off the top turnbuckle, and he delivered a suplex, with, and then he ended up sending Yuta down to the mat. Jericho then delivered a chop to Yuta, which he followed up with some elbows to Yuta's neck. And at this point, Jericho flipped off the crowd, which was funny. And then Yuta fired back with some forearms to Jericho. Yuta then kicked Jericho's face, and then he followed up with an atomic drop. Jericho then delivered an insiguri to Yuta, and Yuta fired back with a cutter off the top rope, which was very good. So both Yuta and Jericho end up in double cross bodies, and they were exchanging slaps. Yuta delivered five German suplexes to Jericho, and he ended up going for the cover, and Jericho ended up kicking out. Yuta ended up going for another German suplex, but Jericho countered and rolled Yuta up. And he countered the roll-up into the walls of Jericho. Yuta then ended up uh, grabbing the bottom rope to break up the walls of Jericho. And he up sending Jericho to the outside. Yuta delivered the toupee suicida onto uh, Jericho. And he had tossing Jericho back to the ring. He delivered a diving crossbody off the top rope. So Jericho then ended up in a double underhook backbreaker on Yuta, which he followed up with a lariat and then hit the lion salt. Yuta then ended up climbing up to the top rope. Jericho countered into a code breaker and Jericho ended up going for the cover. Yuta ended up kicking out. Yuta then ended up in the drop toe hold and locked in a cross face on Jericho. Jericho then end up grabbing his bat, you know, Floyd and Aubrey Edwards end up catching uh, Jericho with that and she ended up throwing out the bat. Jericho then low blowed Yuta and Jericho managed to lock in the walls of Jericho and really Yuta end up tapping out. So Jericho end up win the match. So post-match, Jericho ended up refusing to uh, release the walls of Jericho on Wheel of Yuta. So John Moxley's music ended up hitting. Moxley ended up making his way through the crowd. Jericho retreated out of uh, the ring. And Jericho got on the mic. Jericho ended up saying that he's bringing out the last survivor of Stu Hart's dungeon. And that is... The Lionheart. So we're going to be seeing that, you know, next week. Uh, Moxley versus Jericho, the Lionheart Jericho, for the Interim AW World Championship. But this was a good match. Obviously, it was predictable. We all knew that Jericho wasn't going to lose his shot for the AW World Championship. So, but we're going to be seeing that next week at Quake of the Lake. Moxley versus Jericho, interim AEW World Championship on the line. So, should be an awesome match. And that was how Dynamite went off the air tonight. Overall, very good show, very entertaining. The heel turn by the Undisputed Elite was uh, very good. Uh, also, the dumpster match with the Acclaimed and the Gun Club was awesome. Very good show Dynamite was tonight. But anyways, that's it for my review of tonight's Dynamite. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And the next video will be my movie review of Bullet Train. You know, saw it last night. So there will be a, a review of that. Also, you know, the SmackDown. And AW Rampage review, which AW Rampage is going to be live on Friday, which is awesome. Finally, another live Rampage where the crowd is going to be more energetic than when uh, Rampage is taped every week after uh, Dynamite. So we're going to get a different feel on Friday with Rampage being live, you know, with the crowd. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and see you all 
with the next video, which will be my movie review of Bullet Train.